Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to continue my cleaning product comparisons. This time, I'll be focusing on some more common issues I have when cleaning game consoles and the like. So, let's head over to the workbench and see what we're working with today. Here I have two NES controllers that don't work. And if need be, can be sacrificed for the name of science. I'm trying to emulate the two most common things I see with this sort of thing. People writing their name in permanent marker, and putting stickers over everything. Unfortunately, this isn't a perfect emulation. I didn't have 30 years prepared for this video. I did, however, let these sit on a heater for a day or two to help set the marker and hopefully get the stickers to leave some residue. I'm going to try and remove these stickers in the worst way possible, in hopes of getting residue left on. Now I was able to get enough left on there for this comparison. I'll start with something that was recommended to me. Goof off. Now this did come with a warning that it can remove paint. At first glance, it seems to be removing the yellowing. Possibly an alternative to Retro Bright? With a little bit of work, that sticker finally comes off. Well, the goof-off seems to have eaten away at that plastic a little bit. And it doesn't seem to have removed the sticker residue, rather just kind of smeared it around. I have an idea for a further experiment with this, but we'll come back to that later. For now, let's continue comparing the two different alcohols. We'll start with my go-to, isopropyl. With a little soak, that sticker comes right off. And a little more wiping removes that excess residue. Now let's try the other recommendation, denatured alcohol. Now I'll try not to get too much of that marker, as that's the next test here. This is a little harder to soak that sticker. This stuff dries very quickly. Next, let's compare the two against removing that marker. I want to see how effective these two are. I'll start off with a one cotton swab test. I know if I work at this long enough, I would be able to completely remove that marker. Comparing the two, the denatured definitely wins this round. I think it's worth noting at this point that the isopropyl seems to smear the marker more than the denatured. Again, comparing the two, ND Nature did a far better job at removing that permanent marker. While we're at it, let's see what we can do with some game cases. This one has some marker I just gave up on. Let's see if the denatured alcohol or electronic contact cleaner can finish what isopropyl couldn't. 
I'm sure if I spent a lot of time on this, I could fully remove that marker, but this game just isn't worth that much effort. I continue to do more thorough testing, but the results stay the same. The denatured wins them all. If you want to skip ahead to the next test, jump to 8 minutes, 15 seconds. I won't blame you. This next comparison will be between the two wipes back there, on their effectiveness of cleaning and restoring the controller cords. Starting with my go-to, Clorox Disinfecting Wipes. Next, the recommended car interior cleaning and protectant wipes. This isn't the exact brand that was recommended to me, but I had these on hand. Let's also see if we can bring back a little bit of shine to that game case. Both of these have already been cleaned with the Clorox wipes, so I'll just do the one here with the interior protectant. While we're letting that dry, let's see and feel which wipe did a better job on those cords. It's worth noting that when cleaning these, the Clorox had a lot more dirt and grime on it. But this cord that had the car interior wipes feels a lot more like new, and not so stiff. And back to the game cases. I'd say the interior wipes brought back a bit of shine. Now for my final test that I talked about earlier. For a few hours, I'm going to leave a part of each controller in the products I've tested earlier. Well, I think I know why this controller doesn't work. Someone tried to hide a cut cord in this case. Anyway, I'll leave the part that was already damaged by the goof-off in that. And the other parts in isopropyl and denatured alcohol. I'm fairly confident the isopropyl won't be an issue, but the denatured is used to strip paint and the like. So we'll see what it does to plastic over time. And just in the amount of time it took me to take that controller apart, look what the goof off did to this controller. You can see it's already eating away at that plastic. I'm gonna set it back in there for the whole test and quickly check the other two. Now let's let them set for a few hours and check back on them. This is actually now the next morning. I ended up being curious what would happen to the controllers if left overnight. So we'll take a look at each and see how they fared. Starting with the denatured alcohol, it looks fine. Plastic isn't soft or brittle. And same goes for the isopropyl. Safe to say these are fine to leave on plastics and the like. Now for that goof off. <laughs> That controller is all but gone. I'd be interested to see what happens if I let this completely dry up.
So, there we go. For Goof Off, I'll probably avoid it unless what I'm cleaning is metal. Otherwise, denatured alcohol worked by far the best for removing permanent marker. However, it was a little quick on drying up, which made it less effective at the sticker removal than the isopropyl. For cords and other rubber and plastic cleaning, I'll start off using the Clorox wipes for cleaning, but finish with the car interior protectant. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you really liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it'll help out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.